Hey guys, it's Kendra from Kendra Scott Wood, and I want to share with you some of the uncreating and setup of the Thunder Nova 51. Instead of making this into a full tutorial, since Thunder already provides all of that, I thought I would just kind of touch on some of the things that I think will be helpful for you to know before your laser even arrives. So Thunder's uncreating video, for example, makes it look way easier than I found that to be. So I want to just make sure you are prepared and this way you know kind of what to expect. Before I get into those actual videos, I want to mention two things that I didn't have that I wished that I did. And the first thing is help. I did it all by myself and I underestimated how much work getting it out of the crate and off of the palette was. And the second thing was having a jack or some way to prop the laser up just a bit. And I'll talk more about this later in the video, but Thunder does mention this in their video for the 63, but even with the 51, I think that that would have just been handy. I will just start right from the delivery of the machine because this is something I was nervous about. Thunder tells you ahead of time that the 51 is wider than a standard lift gate and that you might need a forklift or have to assist the driver in getting it off of the truck. When the freight company called, I made sure to ask about that and they insisted, no, I wouldn't need any of that. But the driver's only responsibility is to get it off of the truck and that they don't necessarily have to bring it up to your house for you. Luckily, the person who delivered my laser was very nice. He had it off the truck in just a couple of minutes and he brought it into my garage for me. So that was awesome. So my advice is to just make sure you're prepared for anything. Make sure to communicate with the freight company and ask questions ahead of time so that you're prepared. Now that I've covered all of that, I'll go ahead and share with you some of the uncrating videos and getting this off the palette and some of the setup as well. You start by taking the screws off of the crate and this is hands down going to be your easiest part. You definitely want a power drill for this. You don't want to try using a screwdriver because it would take you forever. And you're going to want to do this on all four corners because you are going to need all four walls to come off. After you get the screws off, you can start prying the crate apart. And this thing is packed pretty tight. You're going to want to start with the top, which was the easiest part for me because the board was a little bit warped and that way I could get a hammer underneath there to pry it off. But the sides were not quite as easy. In the video that Thunder provides, they say that you just need a hammer and a pry bar and that worked fine for the top. But with the sides, I ended up needing chisels and a flathead screwdriver because it was the only thing that I could get in between the two sections. If it looks like I'm struggling now, we're just getting started. Spoiler alert, I do not get this whole crate off of here in this single afternoon like I thought I would be able to. I feel like this is a good time to point out that the video Thunder provides for unboxing is only about three minutes long, so I just want to make sure that you are adequately prepared for how much work is really involved. Something else I should probably mention here is Thunder suggests in their video taking the shorter sides off first. I didn't realize that until after I got the front off and I thought maybe that was my problem, but I don't think it would have made a difference either way. So now that it is getting dark and I am completely exhausted, let's take a moment to look at the size of this laser compared to my old one. Something else I feel like is pretty important to mention for you to keep in mind, you can see how much space this is taking up, so it was easier for me to do this all with the garage open, but it was February in Michigan and it was really cold. The weather is something that you might want to consider when you're kind of timing out when your delivery is going to be, or you might just want to make sure that you make plenty of room in your garage or wherever space you're putting this ahead of time. Once you get the crate off, you're going to find everything that's included with the laser. So this is going to be your chiller, your toolbox, your air assist, the tubing, the fan. And we are just going to go ahead and set that all aside because you're only about halfway there. Each leg is held down with wood, so you have to pry those off as well. And again, this was not an easy task for me. One thing I will say is Thunder does a great job of making sure this machine is not going to move during transport. And as you can see, this is one of the times where I really needed that chisel because this pry bar would have never gotten under there without me being able to loosen it with that first. Now, keep in mind, you're going to have to do this on all four feet of the laser, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what those looked like. And this was the first time that I could have used a jack or something to prop it up. Here's what the feet look like. Three of the four of them were down on the pallet so tight that I could not get them to move at all so that I could access the wheels in order to push it off of the pallet. So I really could have used a jack or something to raise it up just enough. 
Now, I was able to use a pry bar to get the laser up just enough that I got the feet moved, but this is one I ran into the second time I could have used a jack. See that piece of plywood there? There's one on each end, and that's what I'm stuck on. So if I'd had a jack to raise the laser up so I could remove the piece of wood, or if I just had a helping hand to help me move the laser off of the piece of wood, it would have gone a little bit more smoothly. And just a quick note, once you do have the laser on its wheels, just make sure that one of them doesn't slide off the pallet there. So this has been a workout. I'm finally ready to push this off of the pallet. I've got my wall of the crate here as a ramp. I drilled it in so that it won't move and I've got a bunch of material underneath here. Here is yet another step I don't recommend doing on your own. It would have been helpful to have a person on each end. I also mentioned previously that I had material under that wall there that I made the ramp out of. I added some three quarter inch MDF for extra support. My friend Macy of Sweet Pine Designs had mentioned that even with material under it, when she moved hers, one of the wheels punched right through that top board. So I just really want to stress that you should make sure that you've got some good support underneath there. And for what I think will be my final lesson and do as I say and not as I do, make sure you've got plenty of room because I don't know why I originally thought I could do that without moving my CNC machine out of the way, but I did eventually have to make this space so that I could push the laser more forward in order to get it completely off of the pallet. But I did it and finally I was able to move the pallet and the crate walls out of the way. They are very heavy by the way. But we can finally almost move on to the setup. I can't believe how heavy this stuff is. Okay, so I finally have it off of the pallet. I've got it awkwardly placed here in my garage right now. It is so cold outside. This would be a lot easier for me if I could kind of work with the door open and kind of move things in and out. But I was freezing, so I pulled it in. Now I'm going to take the plastic wrap off and kind of see what my next steps are. And then I'm going to work on kind of getting it into the place where it goes and hopefully getting it set up. We'll see if I can get it done today, but it's getting kind of late in the afternoon. So we'll see how far I get today. I want you all to know that once you have made it to this point, it is very smooth from here on out, I promise. So this is actually a very exciting step. Here she is. She is a beast. Oh, wow. Holy smokes, you guys, this is huge. I think I could fit inside this. So now that we are officially ready to start hooking everything up, I just wanted to show you how everything is so nicely labeled on the back and they make it really easy for you to just plug everything right in. Here's what the tube looks like and you're gonna wanna take that foam packing material off. And in the back here, you're gonna find this little card and you can tell that I'm a little bit confused and I don't really know what this is. Don't lose that. I'm gonna talk a little bit more at the end. Make sure that you don't accidentally skip over that when you are watching Thunder's tutorials on getting your laser set up because you are gonna need those little numbers. So this here is your air assist and you are just gonna plug that right into the back of the machine. You'll do the same thing with your fan and your chiller. And like I said, everything is so nicely labeled. Thunder shows you how to test and make sure that all of these things are working properly once you get everything all hooked up correctly. So make sure to watch their official videos and don't use mine as an official tutorial. I just wanted to show how easy this really is to get set up. These here are just the tubes for your chiller. And again, everything's labeled, so very easy to do. You'll need to hook up the tube for your air assist as well. But once everything is hooked up to the laser, you can actually turn everything on and start walking through the steps to actually get your laser running. Now, in order to turn your laser on, you need to plug it in. So make sure that you have checked out Thunder's information on the electric so that you are ready when your laser arrives and are able to plug it in and run it. There's a couple different ways that you can get connected to the laser, and Thunder, of course, provides you with all of the cords for that. And then it has these beautiful switches to turn the machine on. And here is what the inside of the machine looks like. At the time I took this clip, you can see I've already been busy with my laser. And the last thing I just want to share so that nothing stops you from getting going on the first day is if you're going to use USB and you have a Mac like I do, you might need one of these little adapters. Okay, so we are officially up and running. I ran my first little test piece just to kind of make sure everything was correct. I didn't show a couple of things like filling up the chiller. I ended up putting RV antifreeze in my chiller because I'm in Michigan and it is winter and it's cold right now. So if you guys live somewhere where you need to do that and you're 
uh, lasers out in your garage, you might want to look into that. Thunder does have information on their website about that. Um, a couple of other things that I wanted to mention. In Thunder's video, he mentions this little test card in this USB stick. When I tried to load my laser in from what was on this USB stick, it did not match this card. It was actually for a Nova 35 minus the 51. So I did have to enter these manually. And so I just went through the find my laser steps in Lightburn. I did not have any problems. And I went into the settings where he was showing what should be on this card. And I just entered these manually. Make sure when you enter these that it's set to millimeters and not inches. Um, so that's just something I wanted to mention because it took me a second to figure out how to enter these when I realized that what was on this did not match. And then aside from that, one thing I also want to mention is I thought for sure I was going to have to align the mirrors on this. If you're not familiar with what that is, you don't need to worry about it. But if you are familiar with aligning the mirrors on a laser, it's pretty amazing that you don't have to do it on this. So I'm going to do a video on a whole compare and contrast of my first laser versus this laser. I'm going to wait until I kind of get more of a hang with this, but I already have so many things I'm going to talk about. I'm really excited to do that. So make sure to subscribe, check out my other channels to kind of watch my journey with this laser. And I cannot wait to do more with this because it is such a luxury compared to my first one. So again, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them below. I'm happy to share all of my honest opinions on this. And again, subscribe to see all of my future content on this new beautiful machine.